On today's show, Tommy and Kathy are installing some cool new gauges. We're talking about removing rust and a new suspension treatment. Welcome to Performance TV. On today's show, we're going to do a gauge upgrade on this 32 Ford. We're going to modernize it a little bit, put some neat gauges in here, and just give it a new look. So, Kathy, what do you got for gauges? Oh, we have some really cool stuff from Speed Hut, Tommy. Wait till you see what we have in store. Of course, there are all kinds of choices and things that you can do, but let's just bring in Aaron Westberg from Speed Hut. And, and Aaron, this is all made in the USA and lots of different choices that we have. But for our car here today, this is what we've kind of picked out to go along with the rest of his cluster that he okay. has. And we're going to start right off with the tack. Now, I notice right away how easy yes. these are to install. Yep, one of the things that we've done, Kathy, is uh, on our gauges, there's a unique spin lock ring on the back of the gauge that you can spin on the back of the gauge and tighten it up to the dash. And that's a lot easier than the uh, traditional gauges where you see the bracket and you've yes. got to deal with the nuts and all and that And the little stuff. teeny tiny stuff when you're trying to sometimes Ex work up and in. I mean, it looks like Tommy's got a, a lot easier way because he's got the dash pulled out. And something else that your engineers have integrated into your tack compared to a lot of the other ones on the market. Yeah, uh, one of the things that we wanted to do when we developed this tachometer was there's a lot of newer ignitions on the market right now and those ignitions are like coil unplug where you've got eight different coils running all the cylinders we wanted to make a tack that would work for all different types of ignitions and so our engineers made uh, or developed a smart tack technology which lets the tack work on any type of ignition system from a traditional coil uh, aftermarket ignition boxes to coil unplug or coil pack ignitions okay well, i got an empty what? hole over here for Tack yeah, you got an empty hole, and of course, everything comes with the kit that yeah, you let me, need there. Let me slide that in. There. Oh, okay. And in addition to Tommy putting the tack in, we're also going to put in a really cool, cool speedometer, too, which uh, the GPS technology, I mean, what made it, you think of, of doing something like that? It's phenomenal. The technology's changed so much in the last 10 years. If you think of your cell phones, even even uh, cell phones now, they kind of have a delay in the uh, signal response, and yep. so they're not that quick. So you think, how could a GPS work in a car? But the technology on an active GPS is extremely fast, uh, reliable. Uh, there's no signal loss. You don't have to worry about that when it's cloudy or snowy. Or, or if you're around tall buildings, tall buildings like work, works great um, and, and and when you install it it makes it really easy because there's no calibration needed to install the GPS it just you, you hook it up to your power and your lighting and then plug this antenna that you have right there in your hands you plug that in the back and uh, there's no subscription service there's no extra cost needed to uh, to use it and it, it, then it works just like a regular speedometer when you're installing the speed hut gauges, you're going to love this locking spin ring. It makes installation way simpler. Just put the gauge in, put the ring on, and tighten it up. No more brackets, no more nuts. And also one of the really cool things is their daisy chain wiring harness. So once you get it in, there's one wiring harness and each gauge just piggybacks on the harness. There's no need for running extra wires all the way back to a certain place. They all piggy piggyback on the uh, daisy chain wiring harness. I've got a uh, tachometer installed. I'm going to need a speedometer next. All right. I've got that for you right here. All right. Got my GPS antenna. And what's really cool about this is when we mount this in here, we're going to mount this GPS antenna up underneath the dash on this bar right here. It'll go through the fiberglass, so no need to put it outside. You know, Tommy, this particular vehicle has a lot of room for a lot of different gauges. Sometimes you don't have as much room, Aaron, in, in your vehicle or application, but you have right, something right. for everyone and all different kinds of things that you can do in so many different applications. I mean, it's totally customizable. That's right. One of the, one of the things that we did is uh, we sell, we are the gauge manufacturer. We build everything in Utah, in the United States. So it's all made in America. And because it's made in America, we have full control over all the manufacturing processes we build a gauge. And then we sell direct to the automobile enthusiast as well as OEMs and, and, uh, and, and dealers around the world. But it allows the uh, car builder to basically pick an unlimited different amount of selections when they design the gauges. And you can see some of these gauges here with the different colors that, that are offered, including, like you said, if you've got limited space, you can use the quad gauge, which yeah. has four gauges into one. Another nice thing about our products is we've got a lifetime warranty in our products. So when you purchase a Speed Hut gauge, know that we're going to take care of you for as long as you have that gauge. 
You can even put a logo in, in these. That's, and that's right. Yep, you could add logos, you can change the dial color, you can change the glow color. You can basically design the gauges exactly how you want it for your car. Oh man, the customization is awesome. And when you say the made in the USA, that is great to hear as well. You want to find out more about the complete line, hey, all you have to do is just hop on their website at speedhut.com and we'll have more coming up on Performance TV. These are so cool. <laughs> this edition of Performance TV presented by ARP is being brought to you by AMS, because we care. Hearst, America's number one shifter. Garage Art, your dream garage starts here. AJE Suspension, committed to quality and affordability since 1990. And by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Welcome back to Performance TV. If you're like me, the biggest thing I hate is rust. It's hard to get rid of and it's a lot of work. It's a, it, it's a hassle all the time. But I'm with David Harris, EvapoRust. You have a product that makes it simple and, and the rust is gone. That's right, Tommy. We make, uh, we make EvapoRust and uh, EvapoRust is a non-toxic rust remover. <clears throat> we developed it back in 2000 for the U.S. military. Uh, our product is, was developed so that you can remove rust without damaging anything else, including yourself, the environment, and uh, it removes it quickly and it takes it completely down to the bare metal, but once it gets to the bare metal, it'll stop. Well, it's one thing that's really neat about this, you, you can take parts off and you can put them in it and let it soak and take the rust off, but, but products like, such as a, the gas tank here on a motorcycle, they get rust inside of them. Well, you can't get inside to sand that off or, or get it off. Evapor rust will take it off and just pour it in. That's correct. You can just drop your, uh, pour the evapor rust into the tank, let it soak. If you don't have enough of the product to completely fill the tank, you can soak it on one side, maybe four hours, flip it all the way around until you've soaked every side, drain the uh, evapor rust out, rinse it with water, dry it, and you're ready to go. Now, let's show people, we've got some products here that have some rust on them. Let's show them how easy it is to use evapor rust and get this rust off. Sure. David, let's get started. All we have to do is, is pour it in and, just, and let it work. It's as easy as that. We're just going to dump it into a tub. It can be any kind of tub. Any kind of tub. Bucket, tub, Bucket whatever you want. Tub. Now, is there any prep work we have to do just removing anything? No. Uh, as far as removing rust, no. Uh, if it has heavy grease, something like that, you probably want to get that off of there. And the reason being, Evaporust is biodegradable and it's easy to dispose of, but if you get a bunch of oils and greases in there, now you've got to treat it for oils and greases. Now, how, how long will this last? I mean, is it a one-time pour in and then you throw it away when you're done? No, absolutely not. It's reusable. You're going to take this product once you've de-rusted your parts and you're going to either save it in the bucket or you're going to put it back in the jugs for the next time you use it. You can use this over and over and over. Each gallon ought to de-rust about 300 pounds of parts. Wow. You just it, keep reusing it until, until it's wore out. Absolutely. Now we've got a fuel tank here and you can see how bad the rust is inside of it. You couldn't get in here and get it out, so we're just gonna fill this up to give you an example how it, it takes the rust out of a fuel tank. Sure. All right, let's, let's pour it. some in there. All right. And you can see we're not wearing gloves and I'm not wearing our glasses because it doesn't hurt your skin, it doesn't hurt your eyes, it doesn't have much smell at all. If it splashes around, don't worry about it. Now, if you can't take the product off or you wanna uh, leave it on the car, you can wrap it and take the rust off as well. That's right. If you've got a part that's too big to soak, easiest way to handle that is take a paper towel, soak it in the solution. We've got solution in this little tub here. And you can see the rust that we've got right. here. We're just gonna lay it over the top of it. Make sure it's good and flat. Get all the little bubbles out of it. Lay it over the top of it. Make sure it's flat. Yeah, make, you know, the, so it touches the surface area. Exactly. Wherever it doesn't touch, it's, it's not, not going to remove it. It's not going to remove we'll it. Wrap it in some cellophane and uh, That's right. keep, just, it, keep it moist, basically. Exactly. So what we're trying to do is just get a good, wet contact surface. Now, just let that sit overnight. Evaporust comes in all different sizes. One of the new products, you got this three and a half gallon tub here with a little basket to That's keep right. the parts in. We just come out with a dip basket. We sell, we sell Evaporust in quarts, gallons five gallon pails and then this is our new three and a half gallon with the dip basket so if you've got little parts drop them in there no having to fish around for uh, screws and bolts in the bottom of your how bucket. long is this going to have to sit this needs to sit light rust it'll do in maybe an hour at room temperature heavy rust 
you're probably going to need to leave it overnight. These parts that we've got in the tub over there, we need to check on those tomorrow. All right. Well, look at our fuel tank here, David. We, we, this is what it looked like before, <laughs> and now look at it. Exactly. You, you couldn't do that. You couldn't get inside of there and, and take that rust off unless you poured the, uh, the evapor rust inside of it. That's correct. And you're, you get a nice new tank ready to go. No more rust in your fuel tank. Exactly. What, what about the exhaust pipe that we did a wrap on instead of submerging into the evapor rust? Well, the uh, exhaust pipe would need a little bit more time, but if it started like this, and now we're down to, to this. We've got a little bit, little bit of rust here, but another few hours with the wrap method. It's a little slower with the wrap method. But it would have taken that right down to bare metal. It's got a lot of shine to it now. Absolutely. Now, how about our exhaust? It's still submerged in here. We've taken the other out, but what about this? We have not removed this, but this is what it's going to look like. And now all we have to do is wipe it down, and we're good to go. That's right. You want to see where the rust went? There's your rust right there. Well, I've got all kinds of things around my house that are rusty, so I know where I'm going after this. We'll be right back after these messages. Performance TV, coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Welcome back to Performance TV. And our next project, working on this beautiful 1973 Camaro Z28, where we are giving it the full brand new suspension treatment. And Tommy, I've got the front. I got the rear. So let me show you what we've got done so far. On the rear of the Camaro today, we're going to install a BMR suspension rear torque arm system. Now this is going to allow us better traction in straight line. It's going to allow a lot better adjustability. It's going to allow us to get rid of the factory leaf springs and put in a Viking coilover shock. A lot more adjustability, better handling, better performance. And it's a big job. So what I've done already, we've got the uh, torque arm front mount put in place, got the torque arm mounted. In the back, we've got the torque arm mount here. You have to take the cover off the rear end. It actually bolts directly to the housing and put the cover back on and got all that back in place. Now, we got to remove the factory leaf springs, and we already did that. We removed the hanger, and now it's time to put the uh, lower control arm on here and attach it to the rear end housing. So we'll get started with that. Now, all this stuff is a, uh, the kit comes with its bolt on, directly bolt on. There's no fabricating, there's no welding, no cutting. Kits come with everything you need. You either use the factory, uh, factory mounting hardware or if they want you to change they'll say send you new brackets new bolts right, we got our control arm mounted here in the uh, with the loose spring attached now we got to put the lower control arm mount on the rear end housing and then we'll bolt our control arm to it Control arm on here. Pop it in the place. Now the BR, the BMR suspension comes with polyurethane bushings. That's a lot better than the uh, stock factory rubber bushings. So gives you more solid ride, more repeatability. There we go. Tighten that up. All right, that's tight. Now I've got one more thing to do back here. I'll move on to my next step, but first let's check in and see how Kathy's coming up front. As part of our 1973 Camaro Z28 project car, it's going to be getting a complete front suspension from BMR suspension. And we're going to start right off with our upper and lower A-arms. These things are heavy duty. They have been completely MIG welded. And one of the best parts, they come fully assembled with low deflection polyurethane bushings. You also have your bump stop and you've got brand new ball joints. You have some things to keep in mind when you're making the switch to this particular set of A-arms is you're going to be saving something that we all like to do, especially if we're racing or whatever, and that is weight. Weight robs horsepower, and you're going to save about 10 pounds by changing over to these from stock. Something else you're going to get to do, you have a little more choice when it comes to headers because it's going to give you a little more room inside the engine compartment. And they're pretty simple to put on. Yeah, 
last two bolts. We'll have this put together and check and see how it's going in the back. Now it's time to mount this rear cross member. We're gonna put it up behind the rear end. We're gonna to to mount it up in here in the chassis and it's gonna take some time. We gotta drill some holes and take some measurements and get it right. We're gonna mount our shocks off of this right here. And then we're also gonna use the Watts link. We're gonna mount it off of these on each side. So it's gonna take a little bit of work, but while I'm doing this, Kathy's got some information about the shocks we're gonna put on it. Well, the next part of our 1973 Camaro project car and all of our suspension we're doing is to get some new shocks all the way around on this car. And we're going with the Viking Warrior double adjustable shocks. And when you think double adjustable, well, actually 361 different adjustments, combinations, I should say. You have 19 with compression, 19 with rebound. And the shock that I'm holding here is the mate to the one that Tommy is going to be needing for the back of the car here shortly but just kind of wanted to put it together here to show you what it will look like when it's finally assembled because we don't have any of our anti seize on here yet like we will for Tommy's but for mine up front we have a lot of the similar pieces here we have our lock nut and we have our spring nut as well as all of our washers that we're going to need to put on as well. And since we have the whole kit together, the nice thing is it already comes with our spanner wrenches that we're going to need to lock everything down for our adjusting and everything with our, our Viking shocks. Not only the shocks, but we're also talking about the springs that we have too. And these springs are about 25% more lightweight than you're gonna find with your, your standard shocks. The instructions, very nice, and as I talked about all of those different adjustments that you were going to make, well, whether you have like a cruising car or a drag car or what type of ride that you're looking for, it gives you an idea in here of all of the different turns that you need to make, whether on the compression or on the rebound, right down to, hey, if you got over 650 horse, they tell you how to get the car tuned and get the shocks just the way you need to get them done. And we'll have more coming up here in just a minute on Performance TV. This week's ARP quarter mile quiz question comes from Dusty. Dusty would like to know, in the finals of an NHRA event, a record is broken, but there is no chance to back it up. Will the record stand? Well, Dusty, no, it won't. You have to have a backup. You can use a previous run from either qualifying or round of eliminations to uh, get that backup. But no, it, uh, we do require a backup on all records. If you have a question for the ARP Quarter Mile Quiz, send it to the address on your screen. If we use your question on the air, you'll receive an ARP Quarter Mile Quiz shirt. This edition of Performance TV, presented by ARP, is being brought to you by Bush Tech, the world's finest motorcycle cargo trailers. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. Flowmaster, the exhaust technology company. Brake Booster, the finest in brake booster restoration since 1983. And by East Coast Diesel, we will not be beat on price. Welcome back to Performance TV. So I've got both of the bolts tightened for our upper A-arm and we have our bottom one partially installed here. The first thing we had to remember to do before we slid this in was make sure to grease it up a little bit, lube it up so it'd slide in and of course work better for us. Our one bolt started here, get our other one going. As soon as I get this tight, all we have to do is push this up and then we can start prepping for a shock. All right, let's check back in with Tommy. Now that we got our cross member mounted in, it has the location we're gonna mount our shocks. Coil overs are gonna give us a lot more adjustability. We've got where we can adjust the ride height, we can control the uh, rebound on them. Just a lot of uh, neat things we can adjust to get the ride everybody's looking for.
All right, got my shocks on, so let's see how Kathy's going. So we have our two nuts up here. Now, this would normally be where we would be putting in the hub assembly, but just to kind of give you a demonstration so you can see how this is all gonna lay out, I'm gonna just skip that for a minute. We're gonna pull up our lower A-arm. The bottom of the shock will attach with two bolts right here at the bottom. And as you can see, what's gonna be really nice is once this is all put together, all of your adjustments are really nice and close where you have your rebound and your compression. And of course, your locking nuts here where we come in with our spanner wrench. It's all gonna be nice and neat, like I said, and all those different adjustments that you get to make. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and get the hub assembly in here and Tommy. Our final step will be to put the Watts link on, but we can't do that until we put the car on the ground. We gotta get it on the ground, bounce it up and down a couple times, adjust our ride heights, get everything set. Then we'll come back and put it back up here and we'll mount the Watts link right here. Now this is a superior way for lateral movement and repeatability. This is, this is really gonna stabilize this whole area. Well, now that Tommy has everything buttoned up in the back, we're gonna do the same here in the front with our BMR suspension and our front sway bar. This thing, it's a lot bigger, inch and a quarter solid and solid mounting as well, which we have our polyurethane mounts here and as well as the ones that we are going to start to install here, our end links Get it here. Now this thing has been cold formed so it's going to resist torsional fatigue and it's gonna help it retain memory. This on, the rest of our bushings in. Put it here on top, like that. Well, we're gonna get this buttoned up because we've got a lot of things to tighten and torque and adjust. But man, this Camaro is gonna ride so much nicer, have a great feel to it. You know what, that's all we have time for this week on Performance TV. We'll see you next time around.